that you are doing well. Welcome to Monday. It has been a very good Monday morning for me. I was able to do my full morning routine, which always makes me feel great. And I've been getting some work done. Now I'm about to go and meet Landon for a car lunch. And then afterwards, I'm going to be stopping by Annie Blooms, which is an independent bookstore and I actually placed a book order earlier, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that while I'm out and about. I actually have a book club on Patreon, and every single month we vote on whatever book we wanna read this month, and the pick for March was Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. The poll was really close. It was between Big Magic, um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, or The Book Thief, but Big Magic won out, and I'm actually so glad that that's what we're reading for March because I just feel like I need this book right now. Basically, Elizabeth Gilbert walks you through just general fears of unworthiness or feelings of inadequacy or imposter syndrome, terrible things of that sort. She helps you to overcome that and create your creative dreams. It's a very encouraging and comforting read and I have read it before but about three years ago now so I'm ready to reread it, especially now that I am full-time creative. So obviously I already own a copy, but every month I randomly choose a patron to send that month's book to, as well as a handwritten letter. And usually I will spontaneously post some form of literary um, trivia, if you will. And then usually the first person to answer the correct answer to my Trivia is the person that I choose to send that month's book to with a letter. And I'm so excited because Amber Plaxon won this month and Amber has been a patron since August or September and she's also an artist. I've followed her and her work for a while and I just love her art. So she runs a business called Leaf and Letter Co and she designs all sorts of stickers and stationery and they're adorable. And the content that she creates on Instagram and YouTube is super uplifting and it seems serendipitous that she won this month's book, which is in fact about chasing your creative dreams and that's exactly what she's doing, so. Yay, Amber! I'll link her shop down below if you want to check it out. But I am pretending to look at my watch that is not there because I better get going or I'll be late to lunch with Landon. Also, I just have a ton of work to do today. It's a very busy week. I have four videos to get through, actually. Fun fact, I usually film and edit at least two videos a week and upload one to YouTube and then the other is to any one of my Patreon tiers. So yes, this week I have a video lesson, a book discussion, a freelance project, and then of course YouTube. It is a wonderfully full week. So friends, go ahead and grab yourselves a hot cup of tea or coffee, your favorite cozy blanket, and let's get to it.
Hello, it is many hours later, just about midnight to be exact. I have gotten so much done today and it feels so, so good. I finished a YouTube edit and I also got a video filmed and edited and uploaded to Patreon, which is really great for me, but it is also midnight and I should be asleep right now, not just finishing work, so. I am still trying to figure out that work-life balance, aren't we all? But I do feel really good about the work that I created today and that always fuels me up. So overall, I'm feeling good. However, I did have a realization today and I'm not quite sure what to make of it, but I did want to talk about it because it feels important. It feels very important and relevant in my life. So. I just want to talk about it because maybe it's relevant to someone out there and um, could be helpful. So I have been really, really struggling this winter. I think that we all have been struggling this winter, but I've felt very lost. And if you guys have watched a few of my previous videos, you'll know that I've just not been feeling my best physically or mentally. And this isn't uncommon for winter, however, it is uncommonly bad this winter. And I think it's a mix of a lot of things, you know, the pandemic and the chaos of the world that we've experienced for a year now. Um, that's definitely very significant and is a major factor in why I feel this way and why many of us are feeling this way. And the loss of human connection that I've experienced as a result of it all, I think has been the most detrimental to my mental and even physical health. Um, I think it's been the, had the biggest negative impact on me. So I began thinking about this as I was trying to figure out why I feel exceptionally lost and just low recently. And I realized that I depend on other people for validation. I rely on other people to tell me or show me that I am successful. And I haven't been around that many other people this year and I've been feeling like a really big failure recently, which sounds very dramatic, but it's how I've been feeling. So if you think about it, when we are kids, we go to school and we receive grades and if you do your best at school if you study really hard you get good grades and you also get praise from the teacher so you're told that you're doing well you're reassured that you're doing well you have the grade to represent how well you're doing as well as positive feedback from your teacher then when you're finished with school and you have a job if you do really well at your job, if you work hard, then you get congratulated by your manager. You get pay raises or promotions. There are other people reassuring you that you're doing a good job. They're validating your work. And so you feel accomplished. You feel like you're on the right track. We are trained to depend on others to validate our success. It's the way the system works. And so many of us have had that in-person validation almost entirely removed. So many people have lost their jobs and then so many people's jobs look entirely different now. Work from home is so different than working in person and there's only so much that can be communicated through a screen, especially when there's more than two people on a call in a meeting. It is so much harder to effectively communicate. So we're not getting that immediate human feedback, or at least in the way that we are or have been trained to receive in a way that feels meaningful. And so here we are. It has been a year of this and it's really really heavy for everyone no matter your situation just you being right here right now today is huge don't let yourself believe any different you getting to march of 2021 is a huge accomplishment and so with that in mind and school and work aside how about personal validation? Sure, we have systems in place and people to tell us that we're doing well at school and at work, but what about just 
doing well at being human and living life. There's really nothing except social media and comparison, whether it's to your friends or people you kind of know or just people your same age or people that were once your age, people with similar lifestyles, the list goes on. And I don't know about you, but social media doesn't really seem like the best place to be receiving validation or the best tool to measure your success with. That just never seems to end well. And um, I've become obsessed with uh, measuring my self-worth and success uh, through social media because as you guys know, I made the full-time creative leap in January. So it's literally now my job to do well at social media to do well at YouTube and make sure that my work is resonating with enough people. And it's so confusing because this is my dream life. I love making videos. I love running my Patreon. I love connecting with you guys. The relationship that I have with this community is what I find most fulfilling. It's the friends I've made through these videos and the stories I've come to know and the people who have shared them. That's what's most important to me. However, there is also this financial side of things and that financial side of things is governed by views and likes and subscriptions, comments and algorithms and all of those fun things. And that's not been doing very well for me since um, January. So I consistently made, at least on YouTube, $1,000 a month for seven months leading up to January. And then in January, I made the leap to full time and then I promptly made $400 in the month of January on YouTube and I have no idea why it dropped. I'm still putting my all into these videos and many of you have commented on recent videos that those particular videos have been your most favorite that I've ever made. Like I'm still showing up and giving my whole heart like I always do but for some reason it hasn't worked out with the algorithm. That is changing. I am starting to see an incline again, which is a relief, but in that in-between space, I let myself get so low, I felt like such a failure. It became hard for me to show up and create videos. And I really don't like feeling like that. Who likes feeling like that? Nobody does. So I'm not sure exactly what to make of all this, but it's there. I've had a realization and it's that I rely on external validation to measure my own success or self-worth and I need to change that because it's become toxic. So that's what I'm thinking about or trying to remember as I work through this week and um, let me know if you guys have any ideas of how to get through this or just whatever you're working through with work-life balance and success and worth and validation and all of that stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. It's really late and I need to get to bed. So thank you for listening to me talk and um, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Good night.
I'm about to head to the post office to go mail the book to Amber and then check my P.O. box. And when I get back, I'll be filming a video lesson. I don't know why I'm trying to talk to you as I put on this scarf. It's not going well. One second. Okay, that's better. When I get back, I'll be filming a video lesson, which is why I'm all dressed up in this very sophisticated manner. I take my video lessons very seriously. Well, at least playfully serious. And um, I always like to dress up for them. So I'm gonna run by the post office, film and edit this video lesson, and then check off some other to-dos. And if I can do all that, it'll be a great day. If you don't connect yourself to what numbers represent, you will get completely and utterly obsessed with numbers. I can see that there's nothing to panic about because it's not the numbers that matter. Okay. It's whether or not there's a pulse on the other side of that number. It's, I can't, you know, my higher consciousness is actually able to measure much greater things, much more important things. Things like humanity, life, meaning, connectivity. You have the level of consciousness that can concern yourself with so much more and so much, so much higher levels of measurement than just getting caught up on the numbers. Hello friends, welcome to Wednesday. I am running out of steam. Monday and Tuesday started out so strong and were very good days and then I'm just feeling 0% motivated today and I've had a very unproductive morning and was feeling very disappointed in myself until I listened to Creative Pep Talk podcast, which is my all-time favorite podcast. Just about every week, Andy J Pizza comes out with a pep talk for creative individuals, and they're amazing every single time. They seem, he seems to be talking directly to me, or at least what I'm listening to is directly applicable to whatever I'm going through. 
And today's episode was exactly what I was saying at the beginning of this week or at the beginning of this video. He talked about how important it is that we not define success based on numbers like likes and views and shares and things of that sort because social media is finicky. Trends are not lasting. That's why they're trends. They trend for a little bit and then they fizzle out and it's just unreliable. And if you decide to define your worth or your feelings of accomplishment, whatever success is to you, if you rely on something as flaky as likes and views and comments and trends, then you will inevitably be disappointed and very upset. And as I said before, I have been very much struggling with this and I wasn't sure how to put it into words and Andy did exactly that for me and not only did he put it into words but he provided questions and exercises to help you figure out what it is that is important to you, what it is that you stand for, and what it is that if you do this you will be successful, feel successful, feel fulfilled. It is exactly what I needed so feeling jazzed, ready to get this work day on track and I keep swinging around this notebook because I took notes of the podcast and I always take notes on everything. I'm a big note taker. Some things that I wrote down that were applicable to more than just someone who is living a creative life or a creative career are um, just because less people like it does not mean that it's less than, you know, likes do not define your worth. Oftentimes the most important things, the most meaningful things are an acquired taste. Andy's an illustrator and so he talks about the kind of illustration that he does for children's books that is so filled with meaning and importance is very different from the type of illustration that goes viral on say TikTok. Both are beautiful and can be amazing but one is far more significant in a different way than the other. And I think that my art is more storybook art than it is TikTok, and my art is videography. So my videos won't necessarily go viral on TikTok because that's just not the kind of content that I create, I'm capable of creating. That's not to say that TikTok isn't valuable. I really admire the people that make good TikToks. It is so hard to do, so more power to you. It's just that I realized today that that's not me, and so I shouldn't hold myself to those standards or compare myself to those people. And it's the exact same on YouTube. Like, part of the reason I felt so low this morning is because I was looking at other people with similar YouTube channels to me that are experiencing so much rapid growth right now, and my growth has slowed significantly. I, um, what used to take me a month has now taken over four months. Like, I'm growing so slowly and it can be extremely disheartening, but I'm not those people and even though we're similar, ultimately our videos are different and our styles are different. And this doesn't have to be a YouTube, Instagram, social media type thing. It's very applicable to life in general and any job really. I think we'd all benefit from getting clear on what our values are and what success means to us and trying to define it with something internal rather than external forces that you cannot control. And so in my case, what matters to me in my life with my art, what I am for, or what as long as I do, I hope to feel successful are self-love and acceptance. You are more than enough. Magical realism, or rather believing in the potential of the impossible, that every single individual is extraordinary. Ordinary plus you equals extraordinary. No matter who you are, each of us has a story to tell. Each of us is capable of amazing things. And then three is energy for life. You being alive, being right here right now is something to celebrate. Life is fun, it's a beautiful thing, and magic can be found in even the most mundane of places. You do not have to be exceptional to live an incredible life. So believe in yourself, a wondrous you. I'm feeling very encouraged and inspired because numbers do not define me or you. Okay, I think that's it, friends. See you in a bit.
friends and welcome to Friday. I am getting ready to go and have lunch with my friend. It was her birthday and so I'm taking her out to lunch and we're going to a place called Harlow which is actually the very first place I ever ate in Portland and um, it's a plant-based restaurant located in southeast Portland just off of Hawthorne. They have really really good food. I'm not sure they have outside seating so we're gonna have to figure something out. <laughs> the weather has also been crazy. It's been sunny one second and then hailing the next second. So I'm putting on lots of layers and I'm bringing a blanket and uh, hopefully we can find a place to eat outside. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop by Powell's. I went ahead and ordered a new book and it's ready for me. So I'm gonna go and grab that and if they are allowing people inside the store that I'm definitely gonna have a walk around. It feels so good, places are starting to open back up and I'm just so excited for the time when it's once again normal to walk around and shop in stores and see your friends indoors, hopefully soon. We're going to get there. Things are definitely looking up. I finished my video lesson, but I haven't created the Patreon post yet, so I need to do that. And then I still need to film my Wildwood discussion and then I also have my freelance project due on Monday, so even though this week has been very productive, I'm still not where I want to be, but that's how it usually goes. And I'm choosing to be proud of what I have accomplished rather than focus on feelings of disappointment from what I haven't accomplished because the bottom line is that I'm going to get it done. I have to get it done, and I will. And so in the meantime, it does me no good to fret about it. So, trying to stay positive and I gotta get to this lunch or I'm gonna be late. So, let's go friends because you're coming with me. Yay, I'm so excited. Going out and about. Oh, I guess I should grab you. <laughs> gotta get my mask too. It's a really good angle, don't you think? Sometimes I look like a turtle. I think the turtle is my spirit animal. <laughs> Morning. Welcome to a cry face early morning, Morgan. Um, I'm crying because Cheyenne Barton just subscribed to my YouTube channel. I feel silly getting this emotional about it, especially because whenever people get so excited or just emotional about the fact that I've 
answered their comment or responded to a message or subscribed to their channel or followed them on Instagram, I always just want to say it's not a big deal. I'm just a person just like you guys. You are just as important and just as amazing as I am or as you think that I am, you know? And so I feel so silly getting this emotional about the fact that Cheyenne Barton has subscribed to my YouTube channel, but the reason I feel this way is because, okay, I need to backtrack. So I first found Cheyenne's channel back in September, October of 2019 and I just fell in love with her videos. She was the first YouTuber that I ever found that made living life seem like an art or seem beautiful. Like there's something about her videos that is so, I don't know if raw is the right word. It's kind of like an indie movie feel where you just like, there's just something so special and alive feeling about her videos and how she makes things art. Just, you know, um, packing orders or making sourdough, running errands. She was the first YouTuber whose vlogs felt almost like a movie to me and I don't know, I just immediately fell in love with her work, her videos. And back when I found her channel, I had my YouTube channel, but I was not a YouTuber. I still at that point had um, maybe only 12 videos. And she, I did not know that it was possible to have a Patreon. I did not know that it was possible to run a shop that was largely supported by a YouTube audience. I did not know it was possible to create beautiful art on an iPad. There were so many things that she introduced me to that bring me so much joy. And I, she's my comfort YouTuber, like um, whenever I'm feeling down, um, I watch her videos always. And she's such an inspiration to me. And so, the act of her acknowledging my channel is something worthy of subscribing to and um, watching possibly regularly or just just the idea of her even watching my videos is huge it's incredible and it just feels like a huge milestone <laughs> and i know that cheyenne is just a person a very beautiful wholesome individual um, but it is largely because of her that I was able to figure out what it is that I want to do with my life and here we are. <laughs> I'm living my dream life and just feels like it's come full circle and this to me feels like success. How serendipitous this whole week, it's, this has gone on for many, way longer than weeks, but um, when I chose at the beginning of this week to tackle feelings of failure due to defining success and finding validation in numbers. It's a really difficult thing to get away from that number-based mentality and number-based definition of success and I'm so serious about changing that so that I just have overall better mental health and can just carry a lot less weight on my shoulders or just make things much less of a big deal and have more fun and I really really am so serious about that and then how serendipitous is it that when I've finally made this decision and have recognized this um, really heavy toxic way of thinking that I've been addicted to. When I finally became aware of that and made the decision to change it, I was given this incredible new marker of success and it's that my big inspiration has seen my work and thought it worthy of a subscription. <laughs> so thank you Cheyenne if you are watching this. You are a lovely human being who has not only taught me to see my life as if it were art, but also has helped me to feel okay with being sad and maybe not having everything figured out and to not be oh so hard on myself when um, I'm not as productive as I 
would like to be or when I don't feel as successful as I think that I should or as I had hoped to be. I don't know if I'm going to include this in my video. I wanted to record it because it just felt so important to me and it's something that I want to remember but um, if I do include it I think it'll be the ending of the video and so if you have watched this far, thank you so very much, friend. And if you do not subscribe to Cheyenne Martin's YouTube channel, then I so highly recommend going and having a look at her videos. And then also, to conclude, you are not defined by numbers. Your worth is not measured by other people's opinions of you. Just show up when you can, do your best, recognize that your best doesn't always look the same, and then let the rest go. You are more than enough. Everything will be okay. And believe in yourself, oh wondrous you, because I definitely do.